ഹായ് ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് എൻ്റെ ഈ ടോപ്പിക്ക് വന്നിട്ട് വേർഡ്സ് വേർത്തിൻ്റെ അഭിപ്രായത്തിൽ നിയോ ക്ലാസിക്കൽ പോയട്രി എങ്ങനെയാണെന്നുള്ളതാണ് സോ ക്യാരക്ടേഴ്സ്റ്റിക്സ് ഓഫ് എയ്റ്റീൻ സെഞ്ചുറി പോയട്രി അക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു വേർഡ്സ് വേർത്ത് ഓർ വേർഡ്സ് വേർത്ത്സ് ക്രിറ്റിസിസം ഓഫ് നിയോ ക്ലാസിക്കൽ പോയട്രി വേർഡ്സ് വേർത്ത് ഇൻ ഹിസ് പ്രിഫേസ് ടു ലിറിക്കൽ ബാലൻസ് reacted sharply against the subject matter poetic diction and the entire value system of neoclassical poetry the neoclassical critics by and large considered poetry as something lofty and above ordinary humanity consequently both the subject matter and style were not to be taken from what they called the vulgar the crude the low and the trivial neoclassical poetry was an aristocratic one and the style tended to be artificial they aimed at craftsmanship insisting on utmost finish correctness and due proportion poetry and the style tended to be artificial poetry for them was an imitation of human intended to yield both instruction and delight poetic diction for them was a system of words at once refined from the grossness or domestic use and free from the harassment harshments of terms appropriate to particular arts they turned the common place into the grand by personification periphrasis latinism and grammatical license they made use of mythological and pathetic fallacy to evoke the lofty effect in short their poetry drifted away from the natural expression altogether and become vicious distorted and unfeeling okay so the next question is wordsworth's conception of a poet according to wordsworth poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful emotion feeling recollected in tranquility it must be expressed in the language of common man wordsworth believes that a poet is a common man speaking to his fellow beings A poet is a man endowed with more lively sensibility and deep knowledge of human nature. He must have a more comprehensive soul. A poet does not write for his own pleasure but to communicate his thoughts and feelings to others. He must have a more powerful imagination. He must be able to observe absent things. He must be able to share the feeling of others he must feel greater zest for the life greater powers of expression and communication the next question is wordsworth's comparison of a poet and a scientist wordsworth compares a poet and a scientist in his essay prefaced to lyrical ballads according to him a poet tries to discover truth about man and the world around him a scientist also does the same but the truth discovered by a scientist can add only to our knowledge about the material world the truth discovered by a poet clings to our mind because it is truth concerning man's relation to other men his relation to the external world of nature a layman cannot find delight in scientific truth while everyone can find pleasure in poetry wordsworth thinks that science is never a true guide but it murders beauty to desist in other words a poet seeks idle truth while scientist wants to find out particular truth 
that benefits us only materially. Both poets and scientists observe, contemplate and formulate. Both create a wonder and pleasure, but science may give pain also. Poet creates a wonder by producing a willing suspension of disbelief and creates an illusion. Scientist produces wonder by making strange combination of material things and by the discovery of facts. Both poets and scientists work for the welfare of man, but the poet aims at man's spiritual welfare and the scientist makes man materially richer.